by the royal families of England. 65. When we when we say the Royal Canadian Mounted Police or the Royal Australian Air Force, that isn't just to make it sound nice. That means we're talking about who owns it, right? And like who owns who owns the greatest uranium mining resources on the planet? Her Royal Majesty. Why do we not want to get rid of of uh, uh, nuclear reactors? Well, she's going to lose business. Why, why not have the new technologies, stuff that's been hidden from us since the 1900s? Well, because it's not good for business. You can't have a, a, a generator in your home that will never need fuel, that will run your house forever. It's independent of the entire grid. That's not good for business. Rockefellers can't make any money at that. Well, this is what's going on. We've been manipulated and lied to. Wait, you would not believe not believe. There's a lot of weird stuff going on that we won't get into. You know, we're talking off out there, you know, why did they bomb why did they bomb the moon? Japan bombed it, India bombed it, America bombed it. Why do we keep bombing it? What's it's going on crude. here? <laughs> yeah, we just don't have it. And that big shiny so ball I really dislike that at night. I'm the trying to sleep. Prospect. Yeah, they're prospecting. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of weird crap. Okay. So anyway, what I wanted to do, if things go for, you know, go bad, people should be thinking about tomorrow, taking care of their kids, taking care of their grandkids, taking care of themselves, right? But one of the things that I like to talk about is food. You know, and we, I think we talked about that before. Things that don't freeze, things that you can plant later, you eat part of it, you eat part of the beans, and then you plant the rest and all that. Well, one of the things that, that I like to have, is, you, know, you can even get them buy them pre-made now are called bug out bags. You gotta get out of there in a hurry. Have one in your car, something like that, something that you can survive with, right? So, some food, some water, that kind of stuff. Cool. And uh, I brought a list. It comes from the internet. And if you want, please take, uh, there's uh, two pages. And uh, let's get you started. I know it's uh, a weird concept, but I'm sorry to say, until we get a better handle on what's going on out there, I think we should be a little concerned about uh, you know, watching our butts because uh, they, you know, the guide stones are not a joke. It's 95%. That's what they want. They want to reduce the number of people, the consumers. We're not the blue blood, blue bloods. We are the mud bloods. Right? Well, we're dependent, so dependent on the grid. Like Absolutely, you know, and that's another thing. Like, there's there's other things. Like, last month, for example, and I, this is one of the things I looked up on Haiti. Because any any person that would wanted to make an earthquake, and I'm sorry, the technology has existed for at least 30 years. Right? They're going to use tectonic movements or, or uh, crustal movements to their advantage. Like, one of the things that really affects crustal movement is the intensity of solar flares. We've had pretty mild winter last little while. So there's two sheets, please uh, take one and pass them on. The global warming is a farce. Like this whole idea of, you know, of we're the ones that are causing global warming, that's a joke. It was all to, to bring in a new tax. What really runs the planet is that big shiny ball up in the sky. You know, when, you, when you look at the, the sun, and if you were to put the, the, the planet Earth beside it. It's like a grain of sand next to a beach ball. It has huge effect on the planet. Uh, that last month had some of the biggest flares that we've seen in two years. Right? All of a sudden it got really, really warm, right? It had been fairly cold and all of a sudden it got really, really warm. Well, the sun heated the planet. That's how that works. So the, the other thing that happens is uh, it's called electromagnetic pulse. And that happened in, uh, in Montreal. There was a, a pulse that happened there, and the grid was down for a month, right, in the middle of winter. So there's a lot of situations where things like the grid, like, like our electrical supply, our water supply, all the things that are dependent on, on electricity could be cut, cut off. Right? We, we might not be able to go to the grocery store. You know, 
trucks can't start because they can't get the food into the trucks and we can't get the trucks down the highway because we can't get the plows started because there's too much snow on our road. Nee, 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 nee. On and on and on. So we need to think about those things a little bit. Now, one of the things the Japanese who have seen this over and over because they live on a very kind of tumultuous uh, country, uh, you know, tsunamis and earthquakes and everything else, they prepare every year. They, they take a day, it's a national day, they look at what they have in the house that will sustain them for at least a month. Right? Look at what they have. Right? And we should be doing that. And hopefully that list will get you started. There's, there's a lot of things that don't quite agree on that, like the, they say water bottles. Well, I would use, especially in Northern Ontario, I would use a couple of small stainless bottles. You know? And remember to unscrew the cap before you put it beside the fire, right? Because it will blow up if you don't. But you can warm up the water. If it freezes, you can put a stainless bottle inside there. There's a couple other things on, the, on that list that might, uh, you know, modify it to your, your own liking. Um, always have a little bit of cash. You never know like, if the electrical system goes down. No debit card. What are you going to do? You might want to buy a little bit of food or whatever. You'll need cash. Right? First aid kit should be relative to what you know, you know how, to, how to use it. Um, they, they talk about a little a rate, a, a saw, you know, that kind of, some really nice collapsible saws, and, you know, that kind of stuff. But a small kit, something to keep you going. Uh, food, again, things that don't freeze. Things that if you have to be away for a while, that maybe you'll eat some of it and you can plant some later. You know. Depends on how long things are going to go on. But be thinking about that. Uh, of course, warm clothes you should have, uh, everybody should have uh, you know, good boots, good coat. Who knows, right? Like, one of the things that, that happened a while back when we got, uh, there was a military exercise here, I think it was about a year ago or something like that. We approached council and said, you know, are we ready for this? You know, if there was a problem like there was in Montreal where the grid was down for a month, can we Help the people here. Can we feed them? Can we clothe them? Keep them warm? Keep them water, right? It's always food, water, shelter, right? Or shelter, water, food. Shelter, water, food. Right? Those three right? in that sequence, right? And the council looked at them. Hey, do we have generators to keep the hospitals? And, and uh, maybe a place uh, you know, like the arena, can we keep that warm? You know, where all these people who live in apartments, you know, scattered around town, are they going to be able to, to, to take care of them? We're in, in terms of, we have this shield over the thunder. Yes, ma'am. And, and just, uh, maybe it's in here, but, uh, okay, if something happened, all out of the world, how, how can, do you have suggestions how we can keep ourselves up in an apartment? Or in a home? I know we can stay in one room when you're in a home. But uh, what can we do to keep ourselves warm? Well, you know, I, I, here's a story. Um, kind of subsidized housing. It was in Red Rock. It was on a native reserve. And this, this gentleman, a native fellow, of course, it was kind of funny. I was married then, and she was going to inspect the house uh, with another fellow, and, and they were going to evaluate for insurance purposes. Well, Buddy had decided that he didn't like his furnace, so he put a 45-gallon drum in the middle of the floor, and he was just feeding the drum in the middle of the living room. Yeah. And that worked. And that's how we lived. Anyway, I wouldn't want to do it, but the thing to remember is that you got to open the window. You got to let the air flow, right? So anyway, the place is filled with, with you know, it's black everywhere and all that. But you know, in the in the case of uh, like an apartment, to me, the only thing is for people to get together, you know, start body warm, and in the warmest place is going to be the basement, as far as I, I can tell, you know, somewhere underground. If it comes to that. And that would get you through for you know, a day or so. But again, that's why you're, we elect these people, we pay our taxes, to ensure that if scenarios like that do happen, that our backs are covered. And that's why we approached council and we asked them, are you ready? And they just looked at us like we were three bricks short of a load. And I'm sure Montreal has learned since then, you know, that kind of thing. But apparently Thunder Bay is impervious to that kind of thing. I guess we're just a little closer to God. Mm -hmm.